Now hold on a minute, Brian. This doesn't really sound like our own universe, expanding exponentially at some incredible rate. Well, it is expanding exponentially, but not at an incredible rate yet. So the idea that this would have started in the past seems to indicate it would have had to finish at some point, else we wouldn't be here because the universe would be expanding literally faster than the speed of light. Yes, I mean, if inflation had kept going, um, by now every no atom would be within the horizon length of any other atom, so nothing could ever form. Right, so you'd just see, you'd be an individual atom all on your own system. So something has changed that. It's got to stop it. So let's look at yeah, that Mexican hat again. So how's it going to stop it? Well, I guess it's going to roll off the top and eventually reach the bottom. Right, so if I land on that hill with my skis, one could imagine that even if it's perfectly flat, I will get a quantum fluctuation that moves me a little closer to one direction until eventually I do hit a bit of hill. And of course, once I get some slope, then I'm really going to slide down pretty quickly. I'll gain speed and slide down to the bottom at some point. But it does require some sort of either this not to be perfectly flat or for me to sort of get moved over by some quantum fluctuation. Uh, how long it's going to take is going to depend on the exact curvature up here, which is very unclear in the models. There are slow roll and fast roll models in inflation which have different amounts of slope on the side here. But that's the basic idea. So what you might have is a universe, and I've done in blue here the uh, bit that's inflating. This is all still stuck in that false vacuum and, in and growing exponentially. Okay, so everything in blue is growing exponentially, just faster than you can imagine, has that incredibly high energy, it's yeah. full of energy, growing exponentially. But let's say a couple of bits, maybe this bit down here, that bit down there, have rolled off the top and landed down at the true vacuum. Okay, so, so, okay, so here, whatever reason, that, that part of the universe rolled down and something, it's now at a lower energy. So it's going to be nice and stable at the new lower energy, and it could well yeah. be that that one rolled down one way and this bit rolled down some other way. Also, if you roll down the hill differently, that means the way the forces of nature work together might be different. Yeah, they might swap with each other. So, so you're saying then the laws of physics here and the laws of physics there might well be different because the, the symmetry would have been broken differently. That's right. Okay. So you've got regions of the universe which are now expanding at a much more sedate rate uh, with possibly different laws of physics. And this is actually very analogous to what we talked about earlier, cooling down a water. You just imagine you've cooled down water. Yep. Once ice crystals start to form, they might form in different directions, different parts of the water, and then they'll start to expand very rapidly. Right, so I start getting a, a lattice this direction and a lattice yeah. that direction there. Because if you have a bit of false vacuum near here, you're going to want to stick onto this and follow it out. Okay, so these so regions are going to expand at the speed of light. Well, so they're expanding the speed of light, so they're going to end up colliding with each other, aren't they? So they're going to end up looking well, you're of something like, like that, this. so we should be able to see that in the universe. Yes, yeah, so you might imagine we might be in this universe over here, and we'd be able to look over here, and there'd be a boundary where it's bumped into another bit of false vacuum with different laws of physics, which can be kind of cool. Oh, we do have one issue, though. This is exponentially expanding. So it's spa expanding faster than the speed of light can yeah. in that exponential Especially expansion. this won't happen. They won't actually touch. They'll right. be just fly out. They'll right. expand, but the space between them is growing exponentially, and even the speed of light can't compete with exponential growth. Right, so you're going to have this little universe here, nucleate as like a little crystal and blow up, and we're going to have this other one on the other side, so far apart, they can't see each other, uh, and then you get all these little island universes, so to speak, or, uh, yeah, little island universes yeah. going off in all directions. And presumably new regions will form, maybe with even different laws of physics, and then they too will start expanding but get carried apart. So this is actually a kind of interesting way of having an eternal universe. This is the idea of eternal inflation, that while our particular universe, we're living in one of these regions, we see a definite beginning, the Big Bang, uh, it, the whole thing could keep going forever, that you have this universe, most of which is inflating, but every now and then a bit nucleates and forms a normal universe which expands like crazy and gets carried away, and then another bit nucleates and gets carried away, so you're endlessly generating more universes out of a sea of inflation. And since this inflation is going literally faster than light can travel, you really end up with this bizarre situation yeah. where the universe goes off in all directions and no, other, no part of the universe, of one universe, ever talks to another one. It strikes me as rather hard to test. Indeed. Uh, and you think you might run out of the false vacuum that eventually everything will nucleate, but of course it's growing exponentially, so no matter how much nucleates, there's always more. It's right. growing faster than it can ever nucleate out. Right, so it really does go on forever. It does seem like the ultimate free lunch at some level. Yes, and of course this all depends on ideas of the, uh, of 
the exact shape of this Mexican hat, which are very untested. And yeah. in fact, in the next video, we're going to ask uh, Lawrence Krauss, our local theorist who spends a third of his life here and understands these things far better than you or I, yes. to actually talk us through how realistic this whole thing is. But before we get on to that, uh, you had something you that some yeah, news so about you know, this Mexican I hat was diagram. reading something that uh, a number of people have said, including Stephen Hawking, um, and he was saying, you know, the value of the Higgs uh, particle that we've measured and the value, it turns out, of one of the quarks, the top quark, are such that when you put those into our theory, uh, particle physics, that the Mexican hat has a brim that turns over and then goes down forever that direction, and that side as well. So hmm. it's like we're in, the idea would be, if that were true, is we would be in a false vacuum now, and there's a hill between us and where this turns over, but if we were to ever get over that hill by, for example, quantum fluctuation, we would have a wild ride, the universe would, at the speed of light down the hill until something else changed. Which means that if that were to happen, the universe would suddenly, from our point of view, disappear because it would, whatever part of it would come towards us at the speed of light and everything would be gone instantly. Now, I have to admit, I'm not terribly worried about this because you will, by definition, not know it's going to hit you. And when it does hit you, it doesn't matter because at the speed of light, you're gone. But we really don't understand the particle physics well enough. Or have we even measured the Higgs mass and the, the uh, top quark well enough for us to be really worried about it? But it does show you kind of the wild things that are possible in the mind of a particle physicist. So let's go and talk to uh, a particle physicist, Lawrence Krauss, about how realistic this whole thing is.